I'm just sick of getting skipped. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of driving to Chicago to see shows. <laughs> I'm sick of not having awesome bands or people being like, St. Louis isn't isn't that like in Illinois isn't like yeah. where, where people get shot? And I'm like, no. <laughs> this is a sentiment commonly heard around St. Louis, that no good bands play here. But that statement has gradually become less and less true. I wanted to figure out why that is from the people who work hard promoting local music from behind the scenes and to see what they think the music community of St. Louis is still lacking. Um, I always wanted to play, and I think I got my first guitar when I was like nine or ten. As a sixth grader was like getting my parents, you know, dragging my parents to shows, you know, because I needed to go <laughs> and I couldn't, I had no other way to go, you know. In high school and the band 19 was mm -hmm. also going to my high school and that's when I first figured out that you can do it too, you can just do it yourself. It, it's not something for like other people to do, you can mm -hmm. actually get involved mm -hmm. and so I started my first terrible, terrible band and played terrible, terrible shows and then just eventually, you know, you have to set up your own shows when no one wants to see you. Yeah. So <laughs> that's how I started booking shows. I think my first show that I booked was at the Left Neighborhood Arts Center. Started with that and then um, through other shows just made those connections and uh, obviously the touring game, people just uh, send their friends. I had booked some shows before, um, mainly like school parties and stuff, you know, like way out club shows, just low key stuff, but that were real successful, which was the weird thing. Like hmm. everything always had a theme and it and it got a lot of different groups of people to get like it was just kind of my style. It's like how would I play in a dinner party? Let's do it with bands. I started the blog and every few days I'd say here's what's coming up or if someone sent me a link to something I'd put it up there and it, it was kind of whenever I felt like it, and then the zine, the first one just kind of came together. The comp was really good, and I, I made 50 of them and sold them all real quick. Mm -hmm. The goal is really just to, to connect all the tiny pieces of St. Louis, or at least make them aware of each other. If we all communicated better, or at least knew about each other, and gave it all a shot, if you will, we can get those bands more money and have a better time, mm -hmm. and then they come through more often. Basically put St. Louis back on the map because I'm just tired of getting skipped on good tours. You know, some other big cities that people think of moving to, like Chicago or New York or LA or San Francisco. There's a lot of stuff going on there, of course, but it's more, I think, that it's handed to you on a silver platter. Like, here's what to do, here's what's cool. And I think in St. Louis, there's as much going on and there are as many creative people and as much talent. It's just a little bit more under the radar. Like, mm -hmm. you kind of have to dig for it. But when you find it, it's even more rewarding. <laughs> and like... mm -hmm. A lot of people who are passive about all that stuff, who just come to shows, who just like music, whatever, don't realize is that like these venues, these tours, these bands even don't happen without cultivation, right? True. And and like it's a chicken or the egg kind of scenario, right? Um, you know, you look at a you look at a city like New York, and people say like, "Oh, they're so lucky. They get all the tours, they get all the shows, they get whatever." Well, when you really think about it, like they're big enough of a city to have enough cool people who are willing to stick it out and willing to to build new clubs, who are willing to like do daring things with venues, right? Mm -hmm. So that there are places for these bands to have these shows. The reason Austin is music mecca is because bands like of all different genres, ages, uh, locations, everything, all support each other. It's this pretty massive scene, and there's something to appreciate whatever type of music for the type of music that it is. Um, and that's like a regional thing that they have, and I think St. Louis doesn't quite have that yet. We had sort of outlived the era that had Mississippi Nights, that had the Galaxy, that had the Side Door, that had the Rocket Bar, that had these places doing that for us. Those places all disappeared, right? And all of a sudden, it wasn't the bands were skipping us, they had nowhere to go, mm -hmm. right? They, like those bands had no contacts here, they had no venues to play here, they, had, they did not have the things that they needed to come play our city. It wasn't that our city was being overlooked, our city wasn't provided. Uh, my name is Tiffany Minks and uh, I co-own A-Pop and appear pretty much all the time. We started our lease in February of 
2007. So it'll be five years. It's about five years right now. APOP is one of the best things in the city. If APOP wasn't around, it would be even more segmented. At the time, I felt like I went to a lot of shows, like then, especially the first three years that I lived here. Mm. It seemed like there was always like a new like place to go. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly got more into like the punk scene here than I was ever really into like the punk scene in Columbia or anything like that, just because that's really popular here. I think that punk is something that's just kind of maintained this like foothold in this city. Was well, I would book like a hardcore show, but then I'd throw like a noise band on mm -hmm. or a noise group, like not not even like noise rock. I would just throw noise on there, mm -hmm. or like um, it'd be like an indie rock show, and I'd throw like a more like aggressive band on there. I'm not saying make a variety show of half this, half that. I'm saying throw one on there and have them play in the middle or play it play even at the beginning, but make it a norm. I'd really love to connect like yeah. hardcore and metal or hardcore and uh, experimental or even noise because yeah. every hardcore band has feedback and weird parts built into it nowadays anyway. Things are too segmented because people are afraid of, I think, that sort of dead... Um, those those years where shows, all shows, doesn't matter like who was playing or who it was, were pretty poorly attended. There's such insular pockets all over that when the groups do overlap and when the sounds do clash, in general, I always hear the response is good. We just need to have more diversity, you know? I mean, it's you see it in nature, biodiversity is one of the most important things, getting different plant types, uh, in nature and different animals, and different life forms over time, evolution. Look at our mid -size, small and mid-sized venues and they are banging every night. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great. It's great to see people out all the time. And there's sort of this like misunderstanding about what it takes to get there. You know, it's it's not this sort of like are we cool or not in right. St. Louis? It's like, are there people who are willing to work that hard and to persevere to get that to happen? I, mean, I, I think in a way, people respect consistency. And um, if people like Luke or Joe and Mabel have been consistently trying to book bands and uh, make shows successful for years. There's an atmosphere around these events, around these shows, around these clubs that says it's okay to go here, if that makes any sense. It's okay to take a chance. Mm -hmm. It's okay to come here on a Friday night. It's okay to go do something else and grab the la catch the last band at the show. And so it's not so much like, is anyone screaming louder or is anyone consuming more? It's more about sort of the consistency of the whole thing. I like to think that our real kind of mission statement is more about engaging people and letting them know what's going on so that they actually want to go out and see live shows or want to go out and explore new neighborhoods and and in that process you know lose the kind of regional fragmentation um, and just open their minds to things that are going on here which is a lot of music like we are a music city and I think sometimes people forget that. I've been so like jazzed to go to a show and um, I'm really surprised I I often think about that, I'm like, I'm surprised that I, I did just, you know, stop answering this email address. And I love doing it, I love, I love being the one that, you know, uh, sets it up and hangs up a flyer and then kind of backs up and someone sees the flyer. Like, I love, make, like, when there's a big show and everyone's having an awesome time, uh, and there's an awesome band playing. I love just kind of standing back and being like, cool, everything was done right. I think part of it is, uh, yeah, more people are going to shows now. And I think, um, I think a lot more bands from St. Louis are going on tours and going out there and talking to people and trying to become involved. But it's just, I think, sheer, sheer willpower and an interest and love of what we do is probably why it exists the way it does. I think St. Louis is becoming um, a desirable city for people to come through. And, and why wouldn't you? It's right in the middle of the country. It's a great segue to so many cities. It's a great segue to Kansas City. It's a great segue to Nashville, Indianapolis, if you want to go there. And I even find um, 
that a lot of local bands here maybe even have a better national following or regional following. You know, they'll go to cities, you know, either other parts of Missouri or in the region or even the, the coasts and have sometimes better draw than some of their local shows. And that is a pleasant surprise to those bands. But I think if you told the average St. Louisan who's not in a band that, they'd be like, really? Like, what? Mm -hmm. But it's good music and it's like we have a bias against it because it's local. And it should be a positive bias, but mm -hmm. often it's a negative bias. An unfortunate um, kind of thing with shows is that if you stay within your group, the same 20 to 40 people are going to see the same bands that they have opening for different acts, and that's good, but people will, will get burnt out, and uh, people will want to see new acts. And at the very least, if you see them once and you don't like it, that's fine. But if you never see them, then you'll never.